Hi everyone, welcome to Founder Sessions and joining me today is Elaine Parker. She's the CEO and founder of Safer Date. Elaine, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Not bad. We were just having a nice little chat about dogs. Uh, you know, we, the, both dog people, we love our dogs, don't we? Absolutely, yes. The world <laughs> is very dull without them. <laughs> Make life more interesting. So Elaine, tell us about Safer Date. What is it and what should we know? Yeah, uh, I'll, first of all, it's born out of my own sort of experience. So the passion behind it um, is, is just, it, it's my, now my life's work to make this a success to protect people. Um, it was actually my own experience meeting somebody online um, on a, the date app, Plenty of Fish. I decided to have a go because my friends had had uh, real success stories, you know, they had, they'd met some really like sort of nice people that I'm now married to, got children with, and I'd been a single parent for a while, so they encouraged me to give it a go. I tried plenty of fish because it was free, thinking I had nothing to lose. Um, I was very wrong. Naively, I thought that um, date night apps and sites had to do something to keep you safe. Again, I was extremely wrong with that. And the guy I met turned out to be a monster. Um, he put me through so much, um, you know, uh, months of domestic abuse, sexual assault, rape, stalking, harassment. Um, he's now in prison for what he did to me. But when he gets out next September, Despite being on the sex offenders register for life, there's nothing to stop them going back to online dating, which I just find horrendous and it's, it's ludicrous that that is the thing. Um, so the idea of Safer Date came from that because, you know, no other dating app in the world does ID and background checks on everybody. So other dating apps are full of fake profiles, uh, anonymous people, um, catfish, criminals. They openly admit they don't screen for sex offenders because they say it's too difficult and people don't realise this. So Safer Date does a full ID check to the same standard that a bank uses. So it's uh, literally, you have to do take a selfie, do a liveness check, upload a copy of their passport or driving license. Um, and we use biometrics to do facial recognition. Um, and then we do a thorough global criminal background uh, check using an intelligence agency. Uh, and that's not just convictions, you know, like a basic DBS or the likes of this company in America called Garbo. They do um, very, very high level public available information only, which is just convictions, which only shows about 6% of the problem. Um, our background checks show not only convictions, but cautions too, and police information. We can see a clear pattern of abuse and behaviour, so we don't let anybody um, with a criminal pass on our app at all. So I'm pleased to say it's the safest dating app in the world. Looking into this, I was sort of taken aback really that the, the, the apps that are out there, the, the Tinder, the Bumble and whatever, they don't do these checks? No, and it, no. it seems such a simple thing to do that is not being done. Uh, from your point of view, just doing research into this, uh, I guess it was just you struck gold. <laughs> you know, there was just a, it, it's unfortunate, but you found, you know, that big problem. Is that, is that was the big feelings uh, going into it? It's really sort of unusual to find such a niche, such a hole in a market that's worldwide, which I know I've found. I mean, it's through my own personal experiences that I've done so. Um, and rather than striking gold, I, I mean, that, that sort of phrase has never crossed my mind because this to me is about protecting people, about revolutionising the industry so that the people don't have to go through what I've been through. Uh, you know, I'm a single parent from Newcastle and I created, um, it started off as just being a website that does these ID checks and background checks. So why can the likes of the match group that's earning millions of dollars worldwide not put something in place to protect their customers? Uh, it's just wrong. Um, so I have found a complete niche in the market and I'm now it is my total passion in life to revolutionise this industry and also educate people to let them know that, you know, when they're putting pictures on there of their family, of their children, there's sex offenders and paedophiles looking at them because these dating apps do nothing to protect them. And if you're on a free dating app like the one I tried, they make their money selling your data uh, as well. There's, there's such a seedy side to the dating industry that is just so wrong and it's not governed at all right now. Um, so that really needs to change. I agree. And I've been on those dating apps as well. And I, I always feel weird putting lots of effort in my bio because I don't know who the other person is. Oh. But then it's sort of on the flip side, the person that's seeing me might think I'm not who I am. So it's a, it's an odd battlefield yeah. to, to get through. So the biggest problem is that ID checks. Are there any other big problems that Tinder and Bumble just aren't doing? Well, the background checks as well, you know, I mean, ID checks for a start, and even it's not just Tinder and Bumble, it's the likes of Facebook and Twitter and, you know, all of those. Any social site should have ID checks as a bare minimum. 
there's so many people on there, these online trolls that just hide behind a fake profile and think they can say what they want to inflict as much mental harm on people as they possibly can. ID checks would stop that, you know, would hold them accountable. So ID checks is at the absolute bare minimum should be implemented on all of these platforms before anybody's allowed to get on, like what we do. Um, so you know that you've only got real people and people that can be traced if they then do go on to offend. But then the likes of the background checks as well. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether you're aware that Tinder announced that they've um, started doing some sort of background check in America. Uh, honestly, when you actually really look into it, to me, it's both laughable and frightening all at the same time. Um, I mean, they've, they've partnered with this company called Garbo. And as I sort of mentioned before, it's a bit like the basic DBS check that we have here. So ours is only UK, theirs is only in America. So it's only American convictions only. Um, so it doesn't show cautions, it doesn't show that pattern of behaviour, it doesn't show crimes in other countries, it's only publicly available information in the US. So that isn't enough to protect people, um, not at all. They've also openly said they exclude quite a lot of crimes such as drug offences and prostitution because it'll get rid of too many of their customers, which again I think is quite telling. Uh, but you know, the worst thing for me is they don't do any ID checks. So all you need to do to run these checks, um, which each person has to pay for on Tinder on a voluntary basis, is a first name and a phone number. And then they run it on that. But, you know, there's no ID checks. So what is the point in running a background check on a fake profile? These people are going to go on off on these dates with this false sense of security, thinking that they've done a background check and this person's fine, when realistically they could be doing a background check on a fake name. Uh, so to me, it's smoke and mirrors and it's actually making the problem worse. They need to get rid of criminals before they get onto the platform, not put it in the customer's hands so, you know, to then be reactive to it. It it really is just just baffling that an app like these, I keep going back to them because they're like the two the big ones that stand out like Tinder and Bumble, wouldn't want to push that their platforms are, are safe and as good honest people on these platforms. As you said there, it's... It, it's, it's they're there for the, the money, aren't they? Sell the data, yeah. sell the, what's it, the pay for more likes or swipes or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. It, it's all all money for them, not about protection. I mean, I don't know if you saw, um, I was uh, involved in a documentary for BBC Three that aired in February called Dayton's Dangerous Secrets, you know, and that spoke to quite a few people who had similar experiences to mine. Um, you know, I met this guy on Plenty of Fish, um, these met people on Plenty of Fish and Tinder. Um, there was one young girl, she was only 17, and she was sexually assaulted from somebody she met on Tinder. Bearing in mind there's an age rating of 18 plus, but because you, there's no ID checks or anything, there's all sorts of age ranges on there. Uh, and when she reported it to Tinder, it took them nine months to respond to her. And then their response was to block her, not him, block her, and then delete all of their correspondence, and then she couldn't then take it to the police. That was Tinder's response. And to me, that's a case of not my problem, go away. Pushing it under the rug type thing, that is, that is, that is shocking. And it's so sad because that's one case of many that you, you don't necessarily say that's probably happened to thousands of people. It's right. I mean, the statistics that uh, we'll never know the true amount because not everybody goes on to report. Uh, you know, some people are embarrassed, ashamed, scared, which is a totally natural emotion with this. So there's a lot of them actually won't go to the police and report them. And past that, the conviction rate is also really poor. So again, you know, these the statistics aren't going to show the true picture. Um, but, you know, romance fraud, that equated to £92 million last year in the UK alone. So that's people going on dating sites and just being duped into giving people money. And it's not always these big extravagant ones, you know, like you'll see in the news, like women duped out of 100,000 by Nicolas Cage or Keanu Reeves or, and I mean, you do wonder how on earth did you think they were on there? But it, it's not just the, these sort of big extravagant cases like the Tinder swindler. It's, you know, um, there's, there's countries that, um, or companies, a lot of them originate from Ghana and they'll be sat just literally posting fake profiles on the likes of Tinder, Plenty of Fish, Match, anyone, because there's no ID checks or background checks, so they can do this. It gives criminals their own playground. And they'll post a picture of a handsome short soldier and start chatting to women, multiple women, and say, you know, that they're stuck in uh, a war-torn country and they just need £500 or £1,000 to get home. And they're very, very believable. You know, they're well-practiced in this. So these women go, oh, God, that's awful. What can I do to help? You know, the human nature is that you want to help people. 
and they'll give 500 pounds here a thousand pounds there and that grows and that equated to 90, 92 million just in this country last year and id checks and background checks would get rid of that straight away yeah yeah they yeah. still don't do it it, it just seems the source of many, many problems. I mean, the, the reaction to that Tinder swindler, I think I was telling yourself last week, it was quite odd seeing some of the reaction to that. Like, people calling him cute and things. It was like, this guy's a career criminal. You know, he's ripped <laughs> he's ripped women off for thousands and thousands of pounds, and you're sat here on Twitter calling him cute. It's like, it doesn't make sense <laughs> at all. Happens. If you see people's reactions to that, though, as well, there's such a great divide um, to victims of romance fraud. If it's women who've been victims of romance fraud, the responses tend to be, oh, stupid woman, this, that and the other. If it's a man who's been a victim of romance fraud, the comments still call the woman. So yeah. it's a very strange response. It's, it's such a strange sort of stigma it's got attached to it, which it shouldn't. You know, anyone yeah. can be a victim of romance fraud, and it's not just women. There are a lot of men who are victims of romance fraud as well. Uh, and, it, it, you know, it's time these dating apps took accountability for it. Like I mentioned the Dating's Dangerous Secrets. There was actually a solicitor on there that he's paid a fortune by the match group. And he's basically paid a fortune to make sure they're not accountable for anything. You know, the... They just want to make sure they're protected and making money it's so wrong and i mean people honest people some honest people go on there just to find love but then when you hear all this this publicity around it all the the cases that happen it just makes people well i hope it makes people less likely to use these sites because of the the awful nature that comes out of it but if they want to do it they want to go down you know an honest route yeah see if i did yeah you're gonna check my passport you're gonna do these checks and things that's fine that's i feel safer now i can use this platform i feel okay and then i don't know if you saw this last week but the the other dating app thursday mm. the one that you only use on thursday um yeah, i don't understand the concept but the marketing's <laughs> been brilliant to be fair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they posted last week or a week before and in the comments again there was a guy on there who said oh i'm not going to use this app because it's asking for some checks and it keeps my data have you saw any sort of reaction to safer data in that regard people being a bit hesitant to give over their their data or passwords and things uh, I mean, we never ask for anybody's passwords, uh, you know. Oh, passport, sorry, like the passport, but like sort of yeah. passports and things. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a, a, like a few questions very early on, just people saying, I just want to ask you some questions, make sure you're legitimate before I give you this information, because obviously, you know, it, it is, you know, passport, driving license. We know everybody, like every sort of identifiable piece of information about that person. And, you know, anybody who's got questions like that, I'm more than happy to answer them because it's, you know, you're right to, to want to keep your data safe. So we had some questions like that. Um, but, you know, like unlike any other dating app, we will not sell that data. That data is there. It's fully protected under GDPR. You know, we really will look after that. It's kept under lock and key and then some. Um, but, you know, we use it to just identify people so that we can keep you safe on the platform. So we had a few questions early on. Um, but, you know, now people realise as we're growing, you know, we've had sort of over 9,000 downloads of the app just since the 1st of December. You know, people know that we're a leg legitimate company and that we are just wanting to protect people. And, you know, we're very upfront about why we use this information, what we need and what we do with it. We're very upfront, we're very transparent about it. So, you know, that also gives people some sort of security and peace of mind with that as well. Yeah, I love the, I love the sort of the good intentions of it all. It, it's understandable that people are going to be a bit hesitant to pass over their data because at the end of the day, it's, it's who they are. But it's it's all that education stuff isn't it it's like Absolutely. educating potential users and saying this this is what we're doing this is why we're doing this this is the big picture yeah what is safer date doing on that regard so of the education is is there any sort of special techniques that you're doing to get across this sort of education yeah i mean we, we do a sort of a lot of marketing we do um you know blog posts we've got a lot of pr articles going out at the moment um and Quite a lot of those are educational, you know, to let people know um, why we do what we do, um, 
dangers of other dating apps. You know, we're always sort of posting articles to help people. There's quite a lot of information on the website about what you can do to stay safe. You know, when you're meeting people, things you can do. We will regularly post tips, you know, and it's not just for people using Safer Date, it's for anybody who's online dating. It's tips to help keep you safe and get the most out of your online dating experience. Uh, but there is a, a lot of education to do. The um, BBC documentary was great. You know, that was that was a brilliant platform. And, uh, you know, we will be doing some more work with TV as, as we go forward as well to reach as many people as we possibly can. Uh, and also, I'm uh, actually speaking, I don't know whether you've heard of an app called Walk Safe. I believe so, yeah. Well, there's a lady called Emma Kay. Um, she launched that and it's a brilliant app. You know, it, it plugs into all of the police crime data so you can see where you're planning on walking home or walking to go meet friends, what sort of crime rates they are, and you, you can choose the safest route. Uh, and I'm in talks with her at the minute because we've got just such the same sort of drive and where we want to be to protect people. So we're going to be doing some joint stuff shortly as well, which will be great. No, I think that, that, that'll be great. It's all around, it, it's come out since sort of the, the new stories that you see, like the Sarah Everard case and things like that. It seems like a lot of people have, that was a big wake up call for a lot of people or companies yeah. to green cousins who um murderer he had a fake profile on match.com yes yeah, so oh. see that that sort of that's stuff the level is, of people yeah and when you say that because it's so prevalent in the news people you know they start thinking more it's like oh you know there's products out there to keep people safe and i th i do remember that that walk safe one um I also notice like little features on apps that I use. So I, I use Uber quite a lot. Yeah. And I did notice the feature on there where I could sort of text my most popular contact or something to say where I am and things like yeah. that. So little features like that are really like good to just give you that sort of confidence. Like I, I feel okay right now. It's not, nothing's bad mm -hmm. going to happen. So yeah, I love, I love that collaboration, Safe a Day and Walk Safe because that'll be a, a really good one. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's not just about women's safety, it's about men's safety, it's about everybody's safety. I mean, there's so much in the news about women's safety. And uh, yes, I mean, I completely agree with all that. You know, there's there's a lot that still needs to be done, but it's not just women that feel unsafe, it's men too. Um, you know, and I, safer day, it's about keeping everybody safe, not just women. Because, you know, everyone goes through moments of feeling a bit unsafe, whether it's on the metro home or just on the bus home you know you everyone gets into these moments where you feel a bit vulnerable um but having these practices in place where you can sort of text someone that oh, I'm, I'm five minutes away or something or send someone your location like you trust you know go on a date with someone that you're you feel confident is is a genuine person yeah or even the you're walking home at night and you can just ping the local authorities saying i'm i'm walking home this is my this is my route things like that you mentioned there the the bbc documentary yeah what was the reaction off the back of that yeah I, we got a really good uh, response from that uh, and I, I think one thing originally it was meant to be for bbc one um so we were expecting a very different audience when bbc three um relaunched their channel the documentary was moved to bbc three so actually it targeted a much younger audience because uh, that's bbc three sort of prime target and, uh, you know, the reaction that we got from that was really good. Um, yeah, we got uh, sort of so many more app downloads from that and so many more inquiries. And, you know, and also we got so much from it from people just sort of being educated, people getting in touch with us and saying, you know, my attack is still on uh, match.com or plenty of fish or Tinder, the amount of emails that we got like that and just saying it's so good what you're doing. So giving people that security and you know, showing them that actually people out there do care and, and there is a better way and we'll, we are bringing it to people. I think one thing I always, there's a pattern a lot with people that have been through these traumatic things and it's, they feel a bit isolated, they feel a bit lonely, they didn't know who to speak to. Yeah. Is that sort of the common trend that you're seeing as well, sort of feeling a bit voiceless in a way? Yeah, I mean, I think when anyone's been through something, certainly in my own experience as well, you know, you have so many emotions to deal with and, and a lot of it's shame, despite it not being your fault at all what happened to you, whether it's romance fraud or sexual assault or stalking or anything like that. You know, any of these are horrendous to go through, but you feel ashamed. You kind of, I felt weak 
and ashamed and couldn't understand how I'd managed to let this happen to us was kind of what I thought. Um, but actually, I didn't let it happen to us. That you know, it wasn't me to blame. It was this guy. So I think you know, the more people that talk about it and bring it, you know, up in conversations, the less stigma there'll be. So the more that people can have a voice. And you know, you find that with romance fraud, uh, men are a lot likely to come forward and say that it happened to them um, because of that shame. They feel so embarrassed that um, a woman or somebody pretending to be a woman online has actually taken them for a ride. You know, um, been like taking them the life savings and they find it very hard to talk about you know there isn't any shame in it it can literally happen to anybody and the more you come forward and talk about it the less stigma will be i think it's really important to have that voice yeah no i, I agree completely and it, it's safer day look into that sort of support network is safer day looking to sort of maybe create their own or be part yeah. of a support network I mean, at the minute, the way we have um, with Safer Date, we're, we're trying and we are tackling so many other issues with dating apps. So, you know, like women, when they, even before they've put their profile picture on, they tend to get bombarded by messages, um, which doesn't feel good. It's either daunting or annoying, you know, it depends on, on your sort of take on things. If you're just starting to date again, it can actually be really quite, quite daunting. So um, we've introduced a feature where you can only send one message request. Um, and if that person doesn't accept it, you can't send another message. So that gets rid of that. We've got a unique graceful goodbye feature because we find that men find it really hard. I mean, women get this too, but in our research, we've found that there's a much higher percentage of men get ghosted on dating apps. So they're chatting along. They really think they've found somebody nice to talk to. They, you know, they think they're going to end up on a coffee date or whatever. And then the, the woman just disappears and they're left wondering what on earth they did wrong. So we've got a graceful goodbye feature to help people just close that conversation down politely and remember that it is a human being on the other end at the end of the day and you know just to be polite like that uh you know what we and we're, with our app there's no anonymity um you know everybody is a real person fully identified if anybody's blocked or you know anybody reports an issue to us we will look into it straight away you know we've got a team that just we're very responsive we'll help we'll support people any way we can um, but I mean, ultimately, my sort of goal is to start a foundation for victims of domestic abuse. That's where I ultimately want to go. Um, but for now, we're, we're tackling everything we can in app and we'll support our customers in any way they need it. I like that because it's it's also touched on sort of the awkwardness of these apps, like the conversation. Yeah, well, we've got uh, icebreaker questions in there as well. So for people who aren't quite sure of how to start the conversation, we've got sort of some icebreakers you can choose from just to give you a helping hand. Do you yeah. Know can be really daunting if you haven't been on dating apps ever or for a while or you know so we're, we're just trying to make it a, a fun and um safe it, it is a safe place to be but we also want it to be fun you know dating should be fun and we've got video dating in there as well so you know you can have that video date before you go and meet again to just sort of give you that for the sense of security i know a lot of my friends had video dates one friend of mine had a candle at dinner over like zoom or something <laughs> i was like how did it go i was like it went really well i was like oh great <laughs> you know, candle lit dinner. it's a funny concept but you know through covid what else could people do so you know, <laughs> exactly. to adapt, didn't you yeah but uh, but it's awesome to say that it it yes it takes this seriously it does the id checks but at the end of the day it's about you know finding a friend finding a loved one and enjoying that experience because at the end of the day the, the whole the modern age of danger it is on the phone it is through apps conversation you know it needs to be fun and enjoyable and yeah, it does the outcome needs to be is like we've matched two people and they're living happy ever after the course the many romantic no <laughs> films out there and the, the the big ones that are out there just they're just there is that huge thing missing and it's people feeling comfortable on these apps yeah so yeah i think i love the idea of save a day and just what it's doing and i think it's it's brilliant and it comes from a place of genuine you know passion and drive to make this a better space so for many i'm probably not the only one but just thank you for doing that for you personally what's been the most rewarding part of this journey with save a day I mean, I started off this feeling like I was just um, a minute little speck in the industry with a sort of massive um, mountain to climb. Uh, I had such an idea, such, so much drive to do it. Um, but actually, when you, 
you've never sort of scaled a business like this before and you've got some pretty big competition to take on worldwide you know it's it's not an easy task that I set myself here. Um, and I, I started, I just built my my website myself. I've got a web development company as well. So I built myself a little WordPress website just to test the market and see how it went. Uh, and it was actually BBC Radio 5 that picked that up from some of the social media marketing I was doing. Um, and they, I ended up with an interview with Nagam and Chetty and the people that listened to that then helped me on my journey to get me investment to build the app. Uh, and I think the most rewarding thing was, you know, once that radio interview went out there and then the people that were contacting me on LinkedIn and, and getting in touch were just saying, wow, it's amazing what you're doing. Your story is so powerful. What you're trying to do is literally from something so horrendous is change the world as it were. What can we do to help you? Um, you know, the Northeast community has got some fabulous business minds, but just some really good people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, the, you know, the people that reached out and were like, right, legal support, you'll need some legal advice. I'll do that for you for free because I believe in what you're doing. And people pulling together to help us with this cause to, to get it off the ground. Um, it just, it's just fantastic to see people pulling together. You know, there's so much sort of negativity in the world, but the, the Northeast business community all pulling together for, to help me with my cause was just, yeah, it was a fa fantastic thing to, to have. And, you know, the, the business people I've got by my side now and the team I'm growing, it, it's just, it's lovely to see it all, just the dreams coming to life. Um, and, you know, it is protecting people, it is keeping people safe. So it, it's just so rewarding. Beautifully put. And yeah, I think I noticed that as well with the Northeast business scene. Um, in most cases, they're not even there to sell you anything. They just want to, you know, give the, the two cents here and there, just give you a bit of advice. and maybe make a connection to someone that can help you with a certain thing. Yeah. Um, uh, someone said to me, it's like, yes, I'm here to s sell stuff for my business, but half the time I just want to make a new friend and, you know, a business friend and then talk to them about stuff. And I think that that's what's really key about the Northeast. Yeah. It's like everyone just seems to want everyone to do well. And your perfect case study for that. Um, Safer Day is is yourself. Is there is there anyone else on your team as well that's really helping drive this effort? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I was introduced. Uh, I don't know whether you've come across a, a guy called Peter Neal. He runs the Experience Bank. He introduced me to David Stonehouse. Uh, now, David used to be the ex -chief, chief exec of Newcastle United and Sunderland United, and um, he's from a PricewaterhouseCoopers background, and he's now um, heavily involved with TSG. Um, he's now my uh, my chairman, and um, you know I go to him for all things financial. He's just yeah, I speak to him most days. He's he's been an absolute brilliant help to have by my side and help me take this business forward. Um, I have a project manager who is a, a lovely guy that lives in Hexham called Aidan Dunphy. Um, and he, you know, he's really helped me with the app development and managing all of that process. Uh, and also there's um, a guy from B7 Associates called David Broom. And um, he's an advisor and uh, keeps us grounded. You know, if I feel like there's a day when my head's spinning off, he's the one that I pick up the phone and talk to because, you know, Every, everybody, every sort of entrepreneur, everybody in a startup scaling a business has days where they feel like um, it's sailing and it's brilliant and then they'll have a day the next day where they feel like they've just fell off a cliff and can't see which way is up. That's completely natural. It's such an emotional roller coaster. Um, so having this team around us, um, you know, is just, it's imperative. You've got to have that team around you to talk to and the guys I've got surrounding me, you know, are, with all of their different knowledge, it's, it's just the perfect team yeah it's, it's so important because you, you're right you wake up days and you're just like oh, what's what's this day gonna bring <laughs> it's just throw so many challenges at you it does. whether it's what whether, roller coaster yeah you know you, in an hour you could have spoke to a customer solved the problem sent this post did this did that then the hour's gone and you're just like i'm exhausted <laughs> i need a coffee or something stronger <laughs> But no, it's so important just having those people that you can just bounce the ideas off. Yeah. Even if they, yeah. I tried to do it all myself in the first instance, you know, when I had my website and was doing this, that and the other. Um, and 
you know, like it, the fact that it got picked up by the BBC when it was just me, I, I feel very, really proud of that. I, but, you know, there's no way I could have scaled the business and, and you know, got to where I am now without having a team of people around us. Um, you know, with the best will in the world, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you've got. It's far too much for one person to be able to do absolutely everything. And you need to have a sounding board. You need to have somebody to give you a sanity check, somebody to challenge you as well. You know, Aidan's great at that. If he doesn't agree with us, you know, we'll have a good debate about it. And that's really important too. You know, you don't want to surround yourself with people who are just like, yes, yes, whatever you say, yeah. that's not right. Uh, you know, you need people who are going to challenge your opinion because that's how the business grows and scales. Yeah, it's so important as well just to have that sort of devil's advocate where you're, you could be full of passion saying, oh, we do this, do this, do this. But having that person that says, what if, is is like so important. It's like, oh, what if this happens or what if that happens? Makes you think a bit more. It but does. having, you've both got the same goals, which makes it work because you can come to a sort of a neutral ground and progress as well. I, know the first, I remember the very first time I met Aidan when I was introduced to him um, to talk to him about product management and, and you know, see what he thought of the business. I remember one question, he said, I've got a question for you. What happens if somebody doesn't agree with you? Like, obviously, it's your business, it's your baby, it's your passion. It's that, what if someone doesn't agree with what you're doing? And I said, well, that's fine. So as long as you can give us a good reason to back up your, you know, what you're saying, that's absolutely fine. I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. But, uh, you know, that was one of the first things he asked us. So I knew he was going to challenge us along the way, but it's the right thing to do. I, I found that to be a good skill to, to learn. It's like how you deal with someone saying that, you know, as you put that, it's your baby. What you, How are you going to react if someone calls your baby ugly? And it's like understanding how to give a good answer back to that Yeah, is, is so important. Because I've seen some founders that have just kind of, not really crumbled from that question, just kind of shoot it off and it's like give like a, a poor response. But if you can confidently say about it, it's like this is this is the answer to your question and you know, kind of throw it back in the face, so to speak. It's like, yeah, you've challenged us, but this it's okay because this is what we're doing. And you're either along for the ride or you can just watch us be successful. It's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's so important. So um, what have been sort of the biggest surprises for you as well on this on this journey with Safer Date? Um, anything that really made you sit back and think, oh, this is this is different, this is a new challenge? Uh, I think, um, I mean, with, with any new product, when you're launching a new product, bringing something completely brand new and unique to the market, you know, there'll be things you get right, there'll be things you get wrong. Um, and the biggest challenge we've had to face um, that we've had to overcome is you know the background checks that we do the id and background checks they cost us over 100 pound per person to bring everybody on board uh and you know originally our pricing model was that it was 50 pound a month but you had to pay for three months up front so that would cover the costs of our checks and you know that made perfect sense to us because you know what we're doing here is we're keeping people safe there's nothing else like it on the market it's all to, you know, the product is, it's tech for social good. And we thought people would instantly see the value in that and that they'd pay upfront for, you know, pay 150 pounds upfront. Well, actually we were completely wrong with that. Um, it was a, a new dating app. So people weren't prepared to pay for a new dating app upfront that they hadn't had a chance to have in the hands and see. Um, so we, we that was the biggest challenge, the biggest thing that we thought people would just be happy with and actually they weren't. So, you know, now we've got it, it's, it's $39.99 a month. Um, no tie-in, just a monthly recurring sort of um, subscription. And actually at the minute, we've got an offer on where it's only $19.99 with, with the voucher code. So, you know, we're listening to people, we're making it more affordable. The cost of price, uh, petrol's going up ridiculously, gas and electric's going up. The cost of living is, you know, it's hard for everybody right now. So that's why we know we're running an offer on to make it more affordable and um, accessible for everybody. So the pricing thing was the, the biggest challenge that we had to obviously learn from our mistakes. I think pricing is like a skill in itself just to get right, isn't it? Because it, it can be a bit of a, a shot in the dark. It's like what you, what you think is a good fair price that, that covers what it needs to cover. 
Yeah, I mean, if you think for us that the fact that every sort of background check costs us over hundred pound, um, and then you know Apple and Google they take up to thirty percent as well on top of that. So if you look at what we're charging, you know people go, oh, why are you charging for a date nap? If you think of what our actual costs are, you know when you when you actually do the maths, you'll realise that we're being extremely fair, actually more than fair. Um, you know, and we're just trying to to run the platform for people. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to get that across to yeah. users to explain it's like this is why we're doing it it is you know everybody's because... like why isn't it free why is it not free yeah you know you think well do you go into tesco's and and expect to get your shopping for free you know people are providing a service for you and they have costs why yeah. would it be free you know even just to to run the app the server costs you know the staffing costs insurance costs every business has got costs like that dating apps are just the same they have their own costs but people expect them to be free because that's the way the industry's been but they obviously don't realize how these free dating apps make their money i mean it's advertising it's selling your data um for all you know match.com has got sort of uh free versions of their apps they still made uh, did they were they the second highest grossing business across the world last year or something like that so you know that they're, they're making a lot of money off these these dating apps and not doing anything to keep you safe so it goes back to that education, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Getting it across to to potential users, and I mean, you see free data, uh, free apps in general. What they do is they push a poor experience, like a poorer experience, because it's free. They they probably fill it with ads, and you know, it just makes yeah. it rubbish. Whereas typically paid ads uh, not ads apps sorry apps, yeah. are <laughs> mumbled paid apps the experience is much better because there's there's none of that yeah. junk, junk of ads and things pop-ups and things like that and unlike other apps you know often with other dating apps obviously you're paying the premium feature and that'll be for you know more swipes more messages more 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 features but actually again they're not actually doing anything it's not costing them anything to do any of that you know they're not doing id checks and background checks like like we are um so that is literally just for them to monetize it to make money whereas when you're buy, buying a subscription to safer day you're actually paying for your safety you're paying to know that the person you're chatting to is first and foremost a real person and they are who they say they are and they haven't got a criminal background you know i mean what what price do you put on your safety yeah yeah, that that's that's the the crux of it, isn't it? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Never understood the, those those premium features on those day naps, though. It's just sort of a, I don't know. It's just odd, isn't it? Just to get more likes and swipes, it's yeah. There's a lot of people pay for it. It's it's weird. It's I know. I, I mean, I tried Match.com years ago. Um, about this, well, it was about the same time I tried Plenty of Fish. At the time, I didn't realize it was one company that owned them all. I, mm. I was i didn't realize yeah. which a lot of people don't you know match on match tinder hinge plenty of fish you know that own so many of them um but yeah i tried match at the time and i remember when i wanted to cancel the subscription because it was a case of it was free if you got on it i don't know if it's still the same now to be fair but it was free when you got on it but then if you got a message you had to then pay to read the message so they hook you in if you've got sort of four or five messages and you think oh it might be you know from somebody you really want to chat to and um, when i tried to cancel you can go through online on the website and you could like go through half a dozen screens say are you sure you want to cancel do you really really want to cancel can we give you a special offer and then you go no i really want to cancel and when you get to the end of that okay if you really 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 want to cancel you've now got to phone this number which is in a foreign country and then you had to phone them to then for them to go through all this process and try to persuade you and i, I think they just rely on people going Oh, it's too difficult. I give up. Yeah, yeah. You know, they make it really hard for you to get out of it. Which again, it's not right. It, it just feels to me very um, immoral, and yeah, it's not what we're about at all. We've got no tie in. If you want to cancel your membership, you can cancel your membership. It's uh, you know, it, it's there to provide a service for people. The whole psychology around dating apps is odd in itself, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like pay a bit more money to get to see messages and things I, I know one does that it's the whole it just plays on the whole if people are there to generally get a date and they're, they're sort of desperate for it 
they're going to pay for it and it plays on that sort of psychology of, of the human mind it's it's a weird space if, if there's ever a book out there about that i would like to read that because that, that would be like a just a, a minefield of oh we 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 got premium subscriptions up because we block certain features it's like that's and as you say people pay for it and it's yeah. it's so weird yeah. it's so weird you know what? I mean, human beings are sort of hardwired that you know they want a partner they don't want to be mm. on their own you know there's uh that people generally don't tend to want to be by themselves so you know they go onto these dating apps wanting to to find somebody wanting to find a, a life partner um i mean obviously there's apps for other things there's apps for um sort of not exactly a let's just say a shorter term partner mm. uh, to be polite you know that there's different apps out there for whatever you you want to do but uh, they all ultimately prey on people's loneliness and that's exactly what why criminals use them you know if you you went now to try and set up a fake profile on match or tinder or any of those literally you could be on there with a fake email address in about two to three minutes seeing everybody's information then you know criminals do that it's literally absolutely perfect for criminals to give them their own playground to find victims to do people out of their life savings to you know stalk people to attack people um the amount of murders that actually happen on first dates because it's given criminals their very own playground just to pick and choose and, and you know rope people in and id checks and background checks stop all of that and it's just i don't know how any of these companies can continue any of these business owners can continue putting people together and putting people in these situations and still sleep at night i certainly couldn't it does it's sad it, and it comes down to money for those businesses and the id checks across the board like you said early on in the podcast on social media a hell of a lot of trolling will stop if, if those id checks will happen i mean yeah. you, you see it everywhere newcastle lose a game trolls come out in force and it's horrendous the things that people are sitting tight because they're hiding behind a screen and it'll be those people who have got a, some sort of cartoon avatar rather than an actual picture the anonymity that these social platforms i mean twitter's terrible for that mm -hmm. facebook's the same you know the anonymity just gives people this voice in it that they can just say whatever they want to say no matter how hurtful and how horrible I, mean, I did an event for Nat West last week um and there was this this lady came on she was so brave to tell her story and that was about her 12 year old niece um she was raped when she was 12 and then um she was trolled online and bullied by the guy that raped her and his friends his girlfriend and there was all these trolls just uh the online abuse was so horrendous she took her own life at the age of 12 mm. and still there's nothing in place to stop this trolling to stop the abuse you know, I mean, we're implementing a thing at the moment called Hive and, you know, that is sort of like it's an automation, automation technology. So as well as all of the other safety features we've got, um, we're actually going to be monitoring, um, you know, looking for derogatory language, filtering out any sort of hate speech, any mm -hmm. de derogatory text, any sort of um, images that, you know, really shouldn't be on there. Mm -hmm. We'll filter all those out so that people don't see them. Uh, why can't the likes of Twitter and Facebook do that to protect people? You know, the, this like with safer dating the mission that i've got you know it goes so far beyond dating social yeah. sites protecting kids from online bullying you know that there's so much that a simple id check could do to protect people and you know it's time the government stepped in and changed it it would save a lot a lot of horrific things happening um, yeah i mean the amount of suicides teenage suicides uh, hmm it's just it's horrendous and I, I still don't understand why these social media companies aren't held accountable you know they're they're providing this platform to allow this to happen they're not putting things in place to protect these kids and and adults why in our, our world of health and safety i mean you can't walk across a cafe with a wet floor unless they've got a big sign up because you can sue them for whatever but yet on a dating app you can go on a dating app meet somebody be assaulted or you know worse and then there's no comeback it does not make sense at all no it's 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 a horrible sort of space this the whole there's problems throughout the whole internet isn't there and it's it's like you say there's just, there's just no accountability no there's no sort of people holding their hands up and saying we should have did this or we're, we're going to do this there's you don't hear about this stuff 
I know. I mean, if, if you Google the Tinder murders or plenty of fish murders, you'll get multiple results. This happens a lot more than people realize. You know, you think even one is one for like one too many. Mm -hmm. Why at that point is something not done and it should be stopped in its tracks at that point and things put in place so it doesn't happen to anybody else, but that's not the case. You know, there's the, the social media murders, which is another documentary, you know, that ugh, you watch that, it, it, it's heartbreaking. Uh, like Grace Mullane, I mean, she met somebody on Tinder and she was murdered on her first date. Mm. He was a convicted rapist, but he was allowed to use Tinder. The, the problem is so huge and worldwide, um, you know, and Safer Date's taking it on, um, taking on the whole industry right now, but there's so much education to do. Yeah. So much, yeah. Yeah, education is the big thing and pushing solutions like yours to the forefront of everything, whether it's yours, whether it's uh, Orc Safe, just things that make all of this, what would you call it, horrendous stuff that's happening. No, there's, like, there's no word is there? there's no there, one there is it's like there's no there's no word that describes it all because it's just so horrific what's going on on a daily basis um you know i mean the internet now i mean can you imagine having to start again the likes of facebook if they were told they had to start again and that literally nobody was allowed on the platform without an, uh, without an id check the same with tinder the same with the match group and their millions of users i mean it it would affect them greatly but you know so that it should have been there from the get-go yeah. This should have been foreseen, you know, the, the metaverse and all of this. That's it, it's just the snowball effect is horrendous the way it's going. It's only going to get worse unless something's done to, to stop it in its tracks and protect people. And there's there's no sign of that. The latest online safety bill, it, it's it doesn't even touch it. Mm. Nowhere near. Why do you think that is? Why do you think the likes of Facebook, the likes of tinder and all this like why do you why do you think they're just not acknowledging this what do you think is the big overall reason they're making billions of dollars worldwide the money is the bottom line they're making billions of dollars and there's no law there's no legal standard that actually mm. governs any of them so there's nothing at all that says they've got to make a change and because they're making so much money why would they that's sort of their ethos no, there's, there's no morality there. Yeah. Um, it's all about money. And until there's a legal change, a legal standard, why would they change it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we could have started an app. I could have started an app and had no ID checks, no background checks. And, you know, after you go, there's, there's new dating apps pop up all the time. You know, they're all trying to have, I know there's a, like a one for just men with beards. There's ones for just people in uniforms. Yeah, I know there's all sorts pop up <laughs> just trying to find this niche. But none of them do these checks, but you can literally, anyone can start a dating app. I mean, there's the Online Dating Association, but you know, when I looked into that, you don't have to be a member. It's just a, a voluntary thing. And the likes of the match group are a member of the Online Dating Association, despite being no checks, because they've paid them to be a member. So it's kind of just like a badge of honor, but customers see the Online Dating Association badge and think, oh, they must be governed by something, but they're not. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the industry and it, it it needs to be changed. Education's the place to start. And then obviously solutions like mine, uh, you know, that just protect people and help people live their lives. I mean, by 2035, they think that 50% of relationships will begin online. So, you know, as it, it, the problem's only going to get worse. And you said it yourself, you know, you can't open up a shop or a cafe without having all your health and safety checks in place and everything. Yeah, exactly. So why isn't reflected online? It seems no, so... It, it's, it's mad, isn't it, when you when, yeah. you when you say it out loud? But nobody seems to have thought about it. I say this to people and they go, oh, yeah, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. You probably know more than me. Is anyone doing a social media platform that does ID checks? Does that exist yet? <laughs> no? No. I haven't come across one. So if I did switch with the first of its kind in the social space that does yeah. ID checks and background check, it's the only one that does in the world, and yeah, which is great for us. But yeah. you just think, yeah. you know, why is it taking my experience and, and me to, to do this to protect people with the amount of money that these companies are, are making? 
you'd think safety would be a priority, but it, it, unfortunately it's just not. Um, yeah, it, it clearly yeah. isn't. When you put it plainly and it's it's like if they're making money, why should they why should they care? They've got enough money to brush these stories and other carpet. So again, why should they care? It's it's so wrong because at the bottom of everything, it's people's lives. Yeah. Getting destroyed or absolutely. I mean, my life will never be the same yeah. again. You know, I mean, the business is going really well. And, you know, from a, a sort of professional point of view, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in the business. I've got a lot of passion with what I'm doing. From a personal standpoint, point, I'm nowhere near the person I was before I had all of that experience with uh, my attacker. You know, it, it's changed me fundamentally for life. Mm. Um, and I'm certainly not unique in that. There's so many men and women across the world that, you know, have had similar experiences to mine. And, you know, it is, it destroys lives. So yeah, but you know, this is why I create Safer Date. I just don't want anybody else to have to go through this. So I, I just fully intend to educate people and change the dating space and give people that safe place to go. No, I, it's, it's so good that you're doing this and I hope more people look at these big problems that are happening and just say, you know what, something there's clear problems here. Let's try and fix them instead of just being, let's just do an app quick, get some money, and then on to the next thing. You know, actually, yeah. mind my language, but give a shit about the people that are going to be using your products. And, yeah. you know, like you say, safety should be the forefront of everything. And thank you for the education as well, because it's this has opened my eyes to a lot more things. Um, I had no idea, like, the how big this this problem was um so yeah just thank you for coming on the podcast today and, and telling me about this because i've learned so much today and i feel like like you said it's the education everyone needs to just know the the basics of this stuff it's like this is this is safe i and this is why we're doing it and this is why we need your passport and things it's like this is what we're trying to do we're trying to make dating fun again yeah and safe Fun and safe, yeah, so you know who you're meeting, you know, yeah. I mean, you look at, even if you think of things like Freshers Week, university, people go onto these dating apps, so they'll meet people as soon as they go to Freshers Week when they're, uh, you know, in a, a city that they've never been to before and don't know anybody. They could literally be meeting anybody, they're away from home, young kids, they could be, well, I'm saying young kids, you know, young, young adults, I should really yeah. say, but, you know, they could be meeting anybody on these dating apps and there's so many issues happen as a result of that so you know again just choose carefully if you're dating online have a look and see what they do to keep you safe and i think you'd be pretty shocked that it's nothing <laughs> uh you know have your wits about you. You, you you're literally given such personal information and putting yourself in such a vulnerable situation with a complete stranger who could be anybody and who knows more about you than you probably realize so yeah it's yeah it is i've been a, a bit lost for words on this proper podcast because it is simply just crazy that nothing is being done until now oh, with safer yeah. day so oh. i mean when i started looking at it i just i couldn't believe it yeah you know, you know i thought was it just my naivety uh, am i just sort of like a one-off that i'm mean, really unlucky and when I, I i mean honestly if you do a google search but online dating crimes or like I say the plenty of fish murders or tinder murders the, the things that come up the stories that come up honestly they're so horrific and yeah. there's so many of them uh and you know once I, I I really delved into all of this it just made my mission so much stronger because it's, mm -hmm. it's so wrong that it's allowed to continue and it's it's such a simple solution to such a big problem it's like carry out ID checks yeah, it may be a bit longer for the person using your app, but in the end, it's got good intentions and it's going to a good place. So, yeah. it's I mean, <laughs> we, we let people onto the app for free, but you've got to have the ID check, but you can yeah. go on screen, have a look around, but all of the information is like obfuscated, so there's no identifiable information on there. But you can go on for free and have a look at, you know, have a look at the features of the app and get a good feel for it, see if it's for you, see how many people are in your area um that's free but we id check everybody before they do that so we pay for that id check we don't pass it on to the customer we absorb that as a business why can't other companies do that yeah exactly and i think we've we've it's the, the sad reality is is that they may never do that 
not unless they're forced to, but you know, even yeah. if the government decided to put this in the online safety bill, that would be UK. A lot of these companies mm. are based overseas. How would the government then you know how would the world come together to govern all of these? It's now a pretty impossible task because it's uh, too reactive and retrospective, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We spoke earlier about Tinder just doing their bit, but it's just in America. It's like, well, probably half of their user base is not in America. But, but I mean, like with Garbo as well, it's it's such a, a tiny little check of just public information. It's not cautions. It's, it's not everything. It's just a few convictions it may show and... It, it's nowhere near good enough to protect people. It's a step in the right direction, but it's given people a false sense of security, which to me is making it worse. You no, know, we can categorically say that there's nobody on our platform with a criminal history, cautions or convictions, and we, we, we do those checks every 12 months to make sure nothing's changed. So it's all about that safe space. Yeah, that's that's the beauty about it as well. It's like it's, it's constant. Yeah. It, it, it's yearly checks as well which again, just adds to the the level of security and stuff for the people. I, 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 I think it's great, Elaine. I'm, I'm yeah. like generally like excited to see where this goes. Um, where, where do you want it to go? Do, do you want to go globally? Absolutely, yes. We're yeah. just concentrating on the UK now. Uh, you know, we're rolling it out city by city. Um, but then once it's fully established in the UK, yep, I want to go global. I want to reach as far and wide as I can to protect people. You know, with the global ID checks we do, there's nothing to stop us from doing that. That's brilliant. I, I just see it's it's solving a, a really, really clear problem that no one's solving and the world kind of needs it. You know, where you, you see cases like this every single day, people getting robbed out of money, getting, you know, unfortunately losing their lives and things like that. And it's all down to these apps just not taking that care and attention. Yes, yeah. And I'm very excited to see what Safer Day can do. Um, it's you've launched taking on the world. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, and well, exactly. You know, <laughs> and I'm glad it's a good person like yourself because you. I think too many come into this. It's like I want to just make a quick, some quick money and get out. But when it comes from a general place of care and passion, then you know it's uh, it's great to see. So, Elena, I just want to wrap up on a few things. Um, what, what advice would you like to give people watching, whether that be in entrepreneurship or just in general, just just pass on what you what you think? Uh, I mean, I think from an entrepreneur's point of view, um, I, there was somebody who used the term when I was on an event, like talking at an event last week, was um, choose your tribe carefully. And I love that. Um, your tribe, you know, surround yourself with people who have the same vision as you, but uh, who will help you reach where you need to be, and, you know, different skill sets, don't expect to know it all, don't expect to do it all yourself, because it's impossible to do it all yourself. Surround yourself with the right people, um, reach out to the LinkedIn community, to Northeast businesses, because you know what? They are fabulous. They've been such a help to me. Sounding boards, advice, um, people who are, are just in the similar situation, you know, all entrepreneurs go through the same emotions um, and actually talking to somebody and having that sanity check that you're not losing your mind is, it really helps you to stay on track. Uh, from a, a dating perspective, you know, if you are dating online, like I said before, just have a look and see what that dating app does to keep you safe. Do a quick Google search on crimes that happen as a result of that particular platform and be very, very, very careful about what you put on there. You know, our app is the only one that does ID checks and background checks. You could literally be talking to anybody on the other app. So always have your wits about you. And, you know, we've got so much advice on our on our website. That's just about how you can keep yourself safe if you are dating on these other apps. Uh, thank you for sharing as well today. Uh, and lastly, where can people connect with you? What should they check out? Uh, any any websites, any links you want to send them to? Just yeah, absolutely. I um, mean, the website saferdate.co.uk. Um, if you want to speak to me directly, my uh, email is elaine at saferdate.co.uk. The app's available on both app stores. Um, and if you download it um, over the next couple of weeks and use the code SPRING2022, you'll get it for half price. So it's just 19 99 a month. Uh, and that includes your ID check, your background check, and access to all features. Brilliant. Uh, I think I've said it multiple times. And, you know, I, I just love what you're doing. And uh, thank, you, thank you for coming on the podcast today and sharing that story. It's been very insightful for me. And hopefully people watching and listening come away with that education that... Yeah. 
is lacking in that you're you're passing on so thank you, thank you. no problem. you know it's not just about those people dating online you know it's about people whose kids are dating online whose friends are dating online you know talk to them about it i didn't talk to anybody when i went through that what i was going through because i was ashamed and if i had it opened up it would have made a big difference so yeah keep the conversations going because it you know there's, there shouldn't be a stigma with any of it no it's so true so true but that that's been founder sessions elaine have have you enjoyed it i have yes thanks very much carl thanks for having us on no thank you for coming on and yeah so from myself and elaine this has been founder sessions and thank you <laughs>